For now, I want to just briefly touch on a sort of not unrelated, but very different topic that gets shoved into this section. And that topic is the Runskian. And uh, 10 minutes is about enough for this topic. The Rutskian isn't really going to be relevant to a lot of what we do in this class. Because the Rutskian is a tool for deciding whether functions are independent. And it turns out that that's actually something we never have to do in this class. I said that on Thursday, we learn a method for solving this differential equation. Well, what's going to it's what it's going to turn out will happen is that method will give us both these solutions at the same time. And the method will always give independent solutions. So we'll know that the sine and the cosine are dependent because the method we use to find them always gives dependent solution. Oh, that is the opposite of what I meant to say. We'll know that the sine and the cosine are independent because the method we use to find them always gives independent solutions. Still, I'll also say, I mean, um, if we're working with just two functions, it's usually super obvious whether they're dependent or independent. I mean, if you have the sine of x and e to the x, is one of those a constant multiple of it the other? No, they're independent. No fancy techniques need apply. Still, the Rutskian of two functions is, it looks a bit like the product rule from calculus, if you remember that. It looks even more like the, uh, the numerator in the quotient rule, again, from calculus. What the Ronskian is, if you've seen this notation before, what the Ronskian is a determinant of a matrix of functions. If that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. You can think of the Ronskian as just being that combination of functions and derivatives. And because we're not going to use the Ronskian a lot in this class, I'm going to state the following theorem in a simplified form. Suppose f of x and g of x are solutions to a second order linear
homogeneous differential equation. This assumption is a little more stronger than we actually need, but let's go with it. Then we can define the Ronskian of F and G. And the Ronskian of F and G is a function. So if this new function is ever zero, it is always zero and the functions are dependent. Again, not wanting to get into this too far because linear algebra is not the prereq for this course. In fact, on our course rotation, um, we have this before linear algebra. But this might seem very arbitrary if you've seen determinants before. A matrix has a determinant of zero if its columns are dependent. So here, the columns of this matrix are corresponding to the functions f and g. And if the determinant is zero, then the functions are dependent. So it's very similar to that linear algebra result. Um, the only difference between this and linear algebra is the Ronskian is not a number. The determinant's a number, the Ronskian's a function. So you might think, well, a function, it doesn't really make sense to ask if a function is zero, right? I mean, a function, maybe it's sometimes zero but other times it isn't. But this function, what this theorem is saying is that a Ronskian cannot look like this. If the Ronskian is ever zero, then in fact, the Ronskian is the constant zero function. And then so our two options are that the Ronskian is the zero function and they're dependent, or the Ronskian is not the zero function, and F and G are independent. And that brings us to 1045 and the end of this lecture.